One of my favorite pieces of equipment that I have in my setup is my Stream Deck Plus, and I've been very, very vocal about that for quite some time now, so that's not really a secret and should not come as a surprise to anybody out there, but how I use my Stream Deck Plus just changed. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francisco. This is Stream Gear Talk, and today I've got something pretty freaking cool to show you. So last week, Elgato and Corsair sent me their brand new Scimitar Elite Wireless SE gaming mouse. And this thing right here just changed how I use Stream Deck in my setup. And it's all thanks to these 12 buttons here on the left-hand side of the mouse. So let me show you how it all works. And the timing couldn't be more perfect because for some crazy reason, earlier today, Windows decided to catastrophically fail on my computer. I almost thought I actually had a dead computer, which was very scary. But after six hours of trying to fix it, I got it working again. I had to reinstall everything, reinstall literally everything, reconfigure everything, which means I have to reconfigure this mouse to work with Elgato Stream Deck. So you're gonna join me so you can see how awesome of a feature this is. So one of the cool things about this setup is that it works with the actual hardware itself, the actual Stream Deck, like a Stream Deck Plus, which what I have right here in front of me, it could be a regular Stream Deck, a Stream Deck XL, it doesn't matter. You have that, you're good to go or you can even get the mobile version on your mobile device and use that as well, all right? Yeah, so about that, it turns out I'm actually very wrong here. You don't have to buy a Stream Deck Plus or a Stream Deck or a Stream Deck XL. You don't even need to have the Stream Deck app on your mobile device. All you need is the mouse and the Stream Deck application on your computer, and that's it. So I was wrong. Now, continue watching the video because seriously, this is some pretty cool stuff. Now, either way, whichever the case may be, you have to download the Stream Deck app. So we're going to go ahead and type in Stream Deck download. And the first link that we see here is going to be the Elgato download link. So you click that and you're going to download Stream Deck. It's going to be the most recent version. So you're good to go there. Go ahead and download it, install it. And now we're ready to move on to the next part. The next thing that we need to do is we need to download IQ. So go back to your web browser and type in ICUE. Hit enter and you're going to see a series of links here for Corsair's website. Go to downloads and then you're going to have two different options. The one on the right is for Mac. The one on the left is for Windows. Go ahead and download the correct one for you. Install it. You're going to have to restart your PC once the installation is complete. And once you restart your PC and it's booted back up, you can go ahead and launch IQ and this is what it's going to look like. Now, if this is your first time running it, you're going to have a notification somewhere here in the top right corner that says something along the lines of SDK Stream Deck.exe approve or deny. You're going to go ahead and click approve and we are now done and ready to actually set up the Scimitar Elite Wireless SE to work as a Stream Deck using the number pad on the left. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and launch the Stream Deck app. And in the event that when you launch the app, it tells you that you need to connect to IQ and yet you've already done that, all you need to do is close out the Stream Deck app completely, relaunch it, and it should work from the get-go once you've relaunched it and you know that it's working when you get to this page, all right? This is gonna be the Corsair Scimitar Elite page where we can bind all 12 keys on the number pad to actions from our Stream Deck software. Now, what we're gonna do is gonna be very simple, all right? I've already set up my Stream Deck Plus over the last six hours because I had to reconfigure everything. And so I'm gonna bind an action that I use very, very frequently, okay? So I'm gonna go back to Stream Deck Plus, uh, we're gonna go to page one, and I'm going to bind my turning my lights off and on. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna go back to Corsair Scimitar, here, click on this button, right click and paste. So now turning my ring light off and on is bound to key number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it and it's off. And I press it again and now it's on. I think that's pretty freaking cool. But okay, maybe you don't have a Stream Deck set up and maybe you don't have the luxury of just copying and pasting different bindings and different commands here. Let's go ahead and set one up from scratch, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and click a blank space. I already have the OBS Studio plugin installed. So let's go ahead and switch scenes on the fly, okay? I'm going to assign this to my camera A scene, and I'm gonna do another one as my in-game scene. Bam, right there, okay? So now if I hit keys two or three, it should be able to swap between both scenes. So if I hit number two, we're at my camera A scene, and if I hit number three, 
I'm back to my in-game scene. Again, pretty freaking cool. If you think for one second that we're limited to 12 different actions because there's only 12 different numbers on this number pad, I understand your logic, but you're wrong. All we gotta do is just create multiple profiles and make one of the buttons switch between profiles and we can take 12 keys and turn them to 24 different actions. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna go back to the Stream Deck application. You're gonna go ahead and click any button you want, but for me, the bottom right one will do. You're gonna go to navigation and we're gonna go ahead and move the switch profile command over here and just drop it right there, all right? Underneath the Corsair Scimitar Elite title over here, you have a whole different menu. This is where you select your profiles. There's only one profile, the default profile. So I'm gonna make a new profile, okay? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take different commands from my DaVinci Resolve page in my Stream Deck Plus and set this mouse up to make editing a heck of a lot faster. Play and stop for sure is one that we're gonna move over. Okay. These are just hotkeys, by the way. I can kind of do a different video if you want me to show you how to do that, but play and stop. Um, split is a very important command. So we're gonna go here. Undo has saved me many a time. We're gonna go ahead and add split again. I'm gonna basically set this up to mirror my entire profile while keeping things as efficient and as organized as possible. Now that I've just about copied everything from my DaVinci Resolve profile over to the Scimitar profile, you're gonna notice I left one button blank. And that is because I need a button to bring me back to my original profile. So I just go back to switch profile, drag it over here and drop it. And now if I simply press a button, it brings me back to my original profile. And if I press this button over here, it brings me back to the new profile I just made. And you know, I kind of want to figure out how many profiles can we make? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and we're just going to keep adding new profiles. I mean, I'm at 11 profiles. I don't know who needs 11 profiles, but yeah. Okay, so we're back in the original profile. I don't want to open DaVinci Resolve using the traditional means of doing so. So I'm gonna go here to system, click and drag open application to right here, drop it. We're gonna go in here, backspace a little bit and type in DaVin and bam, DaVinci Resolve is now bound to that key. So if I press the key right here in the middle, like so, you should see it open up here in just a second. Voila. So the folks over at Corsair and Elgato literally thought of everything y'all because one of the first things that I had thought of when I heard about the mouse and the Stream Deck compatibility here is how in the world am I going to know what key is bound to what Stream Deck action? Because you know, you got your keypad here on the side, you got the mouse in your hand and you got the mouse and your hand on your desk. So you can't literally he look here and, and see, oh, this is bound to X, Y, Z thing. That's where this little dock right here comes into play. The minute you set up IQ and the Stream Deck app, this is gonna pop up automatically on its own, okay? And as you bind different Stream Deck actions to your Scimitar mouse, they start kind of filling in. So as you can see here, you can see that this is my default profile. If I click the button here at the bottom, it turns my light off. This is gonna take me to the main shot over here. This is gonna take me to end game. And if I hit number five, that's going to, well, right now it's not gonna do anything because DaVinci Resolve is already open, but if I were to hold it, it's gonna close DaVinci Resolve out. Now, we have different profiles and we have a button to switch profiles. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now we can see every single action that I've mapped to my number pad over here that is specific to this DaVinci Resolve profile. And in order to show you that, I have a clip of some of the gameplay I recorded for Elder Scrolls Oblivion Remastered. And up until here in the video, everything else before this point is kind of pointless. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit split. And now you can see that the clip has been split in two. I'm gonna select the portion of the clip I don't want anymore. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete all that out of the way and it's gone. And I've done that here with my thumb, which is again, really freaking cool. Now we have a bit of a section here where we're gonna run into uh, this guy's son. He's inside of an oblivion gate and we're trying to help him uh, stay alive which spoiler alert he doesn't because he keeps getting in the way of my sword and i end up killing him every single time so this time around i just let the daedra kill him and that way his dad's not mad at me and he can help me protect cloud ruler temple anyways after this conversation's over i'm like okay this isn't really relevant stuff so we're gonna go ahead and jump to here i'm gonna go ahead and split this clip 
we're going to go ahead and keep going to this next section or maybe i can kind of cut back to some fighting i'm going to go ahead and split that click this delete that and then we're going to go ahead and play i'm like hmm, let me see if this makes any sense okay cool we spoke with him i just hit him with the sword he's going to die it doesn't really matter i'm going to go ahead and hit this again it's going to stop it and honestly, I'm not really happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click the top one here, button number three, and it's going to undo everything that I've done in the entire project since I created it. OK, now, honestly, it's been a very long day. I don't feel like editing a video at the moment, so I'm just going to switch back to my original profile. I'm going to long press the venture resolve. It's going to ask me to close it and it closes it on its own. And we are done in the one week that I've owned this mouse. This mouse has become a productivity beast in my setup i absolutely love the fact that i can take my stream deck commands my stream deck keys and bind them to the number pad here it has made things so much easier and it has made me so much more efficient when it comes to editing videos for example that i honestly now can never go back to a mouse without a number pad now i realize not everyone's going to buy this mouse just because of the stream deck integration you're probably wondering how does it perform as an actual gaming mouse and to be very honest with you, that's going to have to be a separate video, but I can offer you this. I went through a phase long ago in my life where my mechanical keyboard had to be the clickiest thing in the world. And eventually, thank God, I outgrew that phase. And now I have a keyboard with brown switches and brown switches are much quieter, but still have a good little tactile click to them. And it just feels overall super, super smooth. And if I had to kind of do a comparison between the two, this mouse is the equivalent of that keyboard in terms of tactile feel and sound. I'm going to turn off voice focus on my microphone here for just a second. All right. And I'm going to, I want you to hear what the click sounds like, dude. It's, it's amazing. I just turned voice focus back on just like that. Super fast, super quick. All right. It's, it's, it feels so good to play with. Ergonomically speaking, I have relatively large hands and this thing fits perfectly in my hand. Like seriously, it fits absolutely perfectly in my hand. This is the best fitting mouse I've ever used in all of my years using mice for work or for gaming. The Corsair Scimitar Elite Wireless SE comes in at $139.99 and given the amount of functionality that we get out of this thing in tandem with elgato stream deck it's worth every single penny anybody who uses stream deck will get exceptional amount of functionality and increases in efficiency by using this mouse no questions no doubt it's going to happen so i 1000 percent recommend this to anybody out there especially if you are a video editor and you just want to be able to do things a little bit faster this is going to get you there no doubt about it i'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to the mouse in the description below and as always thank you all so much for hanging out and watching this please let me know in the comments below what did you think of the mouse do you think that this is an integration match made in heaven is it worth it to you and could you get any use out of this like and subscribe if you like the video until next time be good to yourselves be good to one another peace out